Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking. To close out this year, we wanted to do a review of recent publications um, on our favorite topic, EMF and health. The recent publications coincidentally focus on 5G. It has come up quite a bit over the past year in the media that it, 5G is either incredibly bad or totally safe. The truth is more often lies in the middle, and we even did a video of this at the beginning of the pandemic regarding the effects of 5G and the virus. You can see that posted below. It has been more than a year now, and we now have way more information. Uh, so why do we still see headlines that make it sound so extreme? Why are, those, why are there studies describing those headlines and how they made sense? I would like to point out that one way to close down an argument is to make the other person's argument sound so extreme it couldn't even remotely be true. The truth is exactly what we stated in our last video, the five, that 5G does not cause the infection. And like most viral infections, the severity of that has to do more with the individual's health than anything else. So protecting the most vulnerable is always the best option. Uh, 5G, along with all other generations, is for the most part, as there are therapeutic frequencies, usually not in use in the telecommunication, but that is another video, um, it is an environmental toxin. So this means that if you are unwell, probably, also this is probably true for any viral infection, it is recommended that you reduce your exposure to environmental toxins, such as EMF. So turn off your router when you go to bed and don't sleep with your phone next to your head. And if you do, put it to airplane mode. Simple. 5G in the real world by Morelli Otal, Morelli, Morelli Atal in our world. Um, well, it is safe if the standards are thermal, which they are. So the problem is not, that is not the question. The question is, is it safe below thermal levels? The answer is debatable, uh, but research does point to no. You can see also the National Toxicology Program and the Moon Study, I'll post them below. Um, it doesn't matter if in the real world you base your effects on the current standards, then ignore the real world outcomes, such as increases in cancer, like weird cancers, like inner ear cancers, like acoustic neuroma and vestibular schwannomas. Um, now, how is that happening? Again, videos below. Again, 5G likely will only be an issue for your skin and your eyes due to the short wavelength and the minimal tissue permeability. Also, it might be an issue for children and the elderly as they have different exposure maximums, uh, thresholds due to decreased mass and decreased water content. The thermal effects of the thresholds study by Foster et al. Uh, the authors cite experiments showing tissue damage of the ocular tissue at unexpectedly low thresholds and for, they don't know the reason or the cause. For the skin exposure during the testing there was minimal data and what was presented was at usually present at incredibly high power levels. Uh, the frequency analysis was broad, i.e. there were some at 35 gigahertz and some at 94 gigahertz and minimal studies produce, uh, produced Expect, many of the studies produced expected pain results, so like any of the animal studies that they did. Um, there are some interesting things though. For the active denial syndrome, ADS, it's a non-lethal weapon system. It's considered to be safe as it's non-lethal. Um, so we also again did a video on that, you can see that on BitChute. Uh, so standards don't matter if it's a weapon. Um, the pain considered, the pain is considered to be a precursor to tissue damage like if you touch your hand to a stove. But in instances like sunburn, where uh, the, there is no pain until after the damage has already occurred, of course, then this is different. This is chronic exposure, also known as EAI, erythema ab igne. Uh, Long-term exposure, greater than 20 minutes, and skin temps of above 43 degrees Celsius, is usually how they set that standard. And you can do this to yourself by accident with things like car seats, uh, but historically, it was seen in the working class for people working with ovens, like coal or baking, and fireplaces. Um, it's also known as toasted skin syndrome. And that's a little fun fact for you there. Okay. So, a 5G meta-analysis was conducted by Wood et al., uh, where they reviewed 107 experimental and 31 epidemiological studies, both in vitro and in vivo. And they determined there were several quality issues with the methodologies of these studies and rated the studies with uh, an effect size and quality scores, i.e. how much of an effect the study showed and how good what their methodology was. Most studies were deemed safe by SAR, or Specific Absorption Rate Whole Body Standards, 
the authors mentioned that SAR measurements were absolutely required in methodology, uh, and their analysis showed that there was no dose relationship between exposure and effect size. Um, many studies were in the 40 to 55 gigahertz range, as those are mostly being used for therapeutic effects. Again, I did a review on these. Uh, you can see that on these frequencies, you can see the review below. Uh, the authors suggest future research focused on the 5G upper bands, as well as because those are going to be the ones that we see in our environment, and state that there is little likelihood of biological effects below ICNARP safety limits. Well, okay. So, SAR, for one, is not the greatest form of measurement uh, standard, it's f as it's focused on general absor areas absorption rate and not really specific tissues. This also does not take into account the fact that thermal conduction occurs, uh, which leads to minimal changes in tissue temperature, overall temp tissue temperature. Not included in their study, as it came out after this study was published, and it wasn't a lab study, uh, was the evidence of 5G effects on SARS-CoV-2. Let's discuss the big news of 2020 and 2021. COVID-19, aka SARS-CoV-2, aka the vid, and the potential link between 5G. This is not a conspiracy theory, and there is no direct cause. However, 5G does not cause COVID-19. That being said, we're going to dive in and discuss what the authors discussed. Okay, so Rubik and Brown referenced the epidemiological triad, which is agent, host, and environment which is applicable to all diseases uh, as a reason for their pursuing this avenue of research. They reviewed the detrimental bioeffects of WCR and determined the mechanisms by which what they call, WCR is wireless communication radiation, um, may have contributed to the pandemic as a toxic environmental cofactor. Cofactors have come up before, including obesity, heart disease, diabetes, all of those things. The authors determined that the potential pathways that WCR may have an effect are the following. Morphological changes in erythrocytes, including echinocyte rouleau formation, contributing to hypercoagulation, blood clots, impairment of microcirculation, and reduced erythrocyte and hemoglobin levels, exacerbating hypoxia, lack of oxygen. Amplification of immune system dysfunction, including immunosuppression, autoimmunity, and hyperinflammation. We've discussed that as a potential pathway before. Increased cellular oxidative stress and production of free radicals, resulting in vascular injury and organ damage. Increased intracellular calcium, essential for viral entry, replication, and release of it, in addition to promoting pro-inflammatory pathways, and worsen heart, heart arrhythmias and cardiac disease, disorders. So uh, numbers two through five, we've actually already studied and reviewed and done papers on as well. Uh, the authors go on to elucidate exactly how these mechanisms take place and how these potential outcomes could lead to decreased ability to fight infection. So, in Wuhan, where 5G had been rolled out as a test city, uh, this is, is this a coincidence? Perhaps. But since WCR, wireless communication radiation, presents in, as a wide aware of symptoms, as does COVID, tracking in real time out in an open environment would be incredibly difficult. So in conclusion, uh, the safety standards that are, are set for a reason, sometimes that reason is sound and sometimes it comes to pass that it has its flaws. Why it remains in all of its flawed glory, set to something that evidence proposes could be dangerous, is usually a matter of money. The effect of the it's, this would have on infrastructure that would need to change, our lives that would need to be altered for our own conveniences and companies that would need to change or our risk being sued would be massive. Inclu so using the precautionary approach, which would mean change is actually required, we should be doing that already. We as humans are obligated to use this approach and be cautious. So why would you hide that there is a li causal link between this environmental toxin and the world's largest pandemic in recent years? Um, it's easier to make the notion sound crazy than to admit that RF EMF is indeed a toxin there are many factors present that could cause the aforementioned effects, so there is the excuse not to produce a change. And this goes against the precautionary approach, though, to medicine and to do no harm and to the scientific method. Anyways, thank you very much for listening uh, and sticking with us. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to voice them below. We would love to hear from you. And if
if you find information and want the world to know, please feel free to use us as a sounding board and platform. Uh, discussion is part of science and keeping an open dialogue is how education happens, as does progress and growth. So let's keep that going. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.